here comes the pig! Jenna, no one loves you. I regret to inform you that the family of Jenna Long has told us that last night Jenna committed suicide. We would like everyone to take a moment of silence to remember Jenna. We will miss her. My name is DeAndre. I'm a 12th grader and a net literacy volunteer. Hundreds of students wrote to tell us what they thought about bullying and here are four great comments. No one ever deserves to be bullied. If you cheer the bully on or turn away from a person being bullied, you are a part of the bullying problem. Be kinder to others than you think you have to be. And finally, no one can make you feel powerless without your consent. For more information, visit us at safeconnects.org. Hi, I'm Kathy Holloway Hill and welcome to Living by Design. Have you ever wondered what's going on with your children when they're on the internet? What websites are they going to? How safe is it? Well, today we are here on the campus of Ivy Tech and we're going to be talking to an organization and individuals who can answer those questions. I am very excited to have with me Antonio. Hello. Hi, Antonio. Hi. Antonio is the vice chair of the netliteracy.org organization. And Antonio, let's just jump into this to find out what exactly is your role as vice chair of netliteracy.org? Well, um, I talked to Mr. Kent, who is uh, the leader of Net Literacy, and he really comes to me for um, like just certain decisions, or he comes to me and asks me, um, is there anything you want to, like, if like I want to do something, or you know, if I want to participate in something like, like this? That's great. That's good. Now, I have to ask you, because you look so young, how old are you? I'm 16, and I'm a sophomore at Fishers High School. Wow, you're 16, and you're a sophomore at Fishers High School. Now, 16-year-olds in high school, you could be doing anything. You could be out playing basketball or hanging with your friends and all these things. What inspired you to want to be part of a program like this? Um, well, a little bit of my father because his, um, he does a lot in the technology like industry and um, really because I used to spend a lot of my time and still to this day I spend a lot of my time on the internet and growing up in a family that really knew and was a little tech savvy, I kind of grew up knowing a lot about technology and I kind of thought about what if I didn't grow up in a family that wasn't like tech savvy, what will, what will the situations I would been in, been impacted a little bit differently. Exactly. Well, I have to give kudos to your dad. So congratulations to him and congratulations to you also for even listening to your dad because there's a lot of teenagers out there who just think their parents are just fuddy duddies. They don't know anything. So congratulations to you for that because you're really going to help a lot of children, not just your age, but even younger. And let's kind of talk a little bit about that because you do actually work with programs who help children who are even in elementary school. Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, recently, actually, um, me and uh, well, a couple of others from Net Literacy and I, we presented to a, a bunch of elementary school students, and we presented internet safety, just like common knowledge. Well, common knowledge for me, but for someone that that young age, not really some like some things that you would know. Um, just talking about internet predators, like certain signs, red flags, and stuff like that, and a lot of them had questions that I myself didn't think that, like you know, like most people kn would know, but like uh, at that age, they really didn't, and it really surprised me that they didn't know about like certain things that most people know. Now, internet safety—that's massive for me because I have, well, I have young people who are very dear to me. I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Internet safety is huge, and I know it's a very big topic for a lot of parents out there and caregivers. So when you say internet safety, what is it that you're teaching these young children, the elementary school children? What types of things are, are you teaching them that they should be aware of? Um, they should be aware of that uh, not everybody out there really says who they, who they are. And, Amen. Uh, certain, also certain things like things you post online that if – Really, if you wouldn't say it in person, that maybe you shouldn't say it online because it's pretty much the same thing. You're talking to another human being. 
um, and also kind of trusting your parents and I feel like that's something very big is telling your parents kind of everything that you're doing online and um, knowing that uh, like the internet is just an extension of you putting your thoughts out and you should also like be careful of that too. Yes, yes. And since we're talking about internet safety, what are, I'm familiar with Facebook and Twitter, but I don't know all the social media sites. So what are some of the social media sites that the young people who are viewing us today that they should kind of keep an eye out for? Um, most of the popular ones like Twitter, you have, well, you have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. There's a lot of other sites that, but those are the most popular ones. And even anything that you put online, even if it is in a social networking site, you should still be careful of what you're saying. Right. Now, I know there's a lot of like Yahoo and I don't know, Google or somebody. They have some chat room type of thing. So is that also something that they really need to kind of pay attention to? Or is the email thing, the chat room email sites not that big of a deal? Um, they are a big of a deal. Um, nowadays, like with email, for example, they have like, you know, spam filters and all that, that like gets right. rid of all the stuff that, you know, is kind of out there. Um, and even with chat rooms, you really shouldn't be chatting with people you don't know. And it's like text messaging. I might like chat my dad or something, hey, be home at this time, or this is when dinner is ready or something like that. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be chatting with someone who lives in another country about something that's like personal to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now, what about text messaging? I mean, I know a lot of people have mobile devices, and I, just my opinion, I think it's really young children who really shouldn't even have mobile devices, but they do. Um, yeah, sorry to interrupt. No, but, go ahead, go um, ahead. Um, yes, actually, um, I feel like when someone at a young age, like, like you said, they really don't have the, you know, the thought process that this person might be not who they say they are. And at that age, you should, like, they should really only be talking to your parents or your grandparents or something like that. And text messaging doesn't really get more, like, advanced and stuff in normal conversation until you get into high school. Once you get into high school, um, even when you're text messaging, like I said, you should kind of tell your parents, even if you did something wrong, your parents are going to be there for you. I mean, you'll get in trouble maybe, but they don't want you to get hurt later on on the line. So right. you should, you know, um, you should watch what you're saying and, you know, watch what you're sending and something that you might think is actually harmless might impact someone else different. Right. And I know you also do a lot of work with youth organizations like, uh, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, and other or what other organizations do you help out? Because I know you do a lot of work with in the elementary schools. So what else? And are there any other organizations? Um, the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts. Uh, I mean, really, we have like a wide range of everybody that we help. Like we just kind of ask around and. Okay, is there a charge for what you do for organizations? Like. What do you mean by that? Like, I mean, is it free to them if yes. they call on? Oh, yes, excellent. Yes. Yes, awesome. I feel like knowledge like that should be widely acceptable without Absolutely. any charge. Absolutely. That's really good to know, Antonio. And I want to dig a little bit more into that about the safety aspect of it. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be right back with more of net literacy and Internet safety here on Living by Design. Tom, you and I have been customers here at Household Furniture for a long time. Oh, yeah. You come out to my house, well, you think you walk into Household Furniture. OK, so you've got Dining room furniture? Yes. Televisions? Yep. Bedroom suits? Yep. And appliances? Yeah. It's all here at Household Furniture. New name brand living room groups, bedroom suits, TVs, and appliances. Plus, ask about our in-store financing and cash discounts. Don't make the rental mistake. Come on to Household Furniture. My name is Ella. I'm a fifth grader and a net literacy volunteer. Here are four things that you can do to help reduce bullying. Teach younger friends how to be safe online. If it is safe, tell someone that you see being a bully to stop. Talk to someone that has been bullied and be their friend. Lead the person being bullied away and walk with them because two are better than one. Bullying is a group activity, so if we all come together, we can stop bullying. For more information, visit us at saveconnects.org. Welcome back. We are now here with Mattia. And Mattia is also a board member on the netliteracy.org board. And Mattia, just tell our viewers, what is your role on the board? What are your main responsibilities? 
Um, well, I represent net literacy as a student. Um, I, I come whenever I'm needed. I go to events and I, um, I kind of, you know, share what I've learned through experiences working with net literacy for the past four years. Wow. Learned a lot about bullying and a lot about internet safety. Awesome. I love that. Now, how old are you? I'm 17, going on 18. 17, and so that means you're a sophomore. I'm a senior. You're a senior. Okay, so you're a senior in high school. So again, I am so proud of you for even caring about this topic and to bring awareness to all of our viewers, our young viewers, as well as our parents. So let's dig into net, internet safety, because the previous segment, we talked a little bit about it with Antonio. So I really want to get more into that. I want to talk about first, what are some of the signs? Let's say that you're on a chat room or you're in one of the social media sites. I know Facebook and Twitter and Antonio mentioned a couple others that are pretty popular. Facebook, Twitter, and what's the other ones? I'm not very familiar with um I know those are the two big ones anyway. So so let's just say that you're you're chatting with someone or you you've met someone. At what point would your antenna started going up and you start thinking to yourself, mm, this is not really going down the right path? Um for Facebook, for example, because I yes. do use Facebook. Okay. Um, when you get friend requests from people that you think you know or may have seen before but don't really know that well, kind of do a little more digging, kind of like look, see what they have on their, on their page, kind of make sure there's no inappropriate pictures because that's kind of a red flag right there. Okay. And what they're saying, are they cursing a lot? Do they have something maybe sexual in their name? Kind of avoid those people. And if they bring up something in a conversation like, you know, where will you be then or where do you live or what are you planning to do this weekend? Kind of kind of look in, look into that and either block them, completely cut off the conversation or, you know, look for dig for more information. Like, why are you asking me this question? <laughs> because I'm not sure if I really know you or if it's something of that nature, then it can be complicated. But blocking them and severing contact is honestly the best thing to do. Now let me ask you this question because I actually have always wondered this myself when I get friend requests from people you know how it says you have this many mutual friends. Mm -hmm. How important is it that you have a lot of mutual friends? Let's say someone sends you a friend request and you only have two mutual friends. Is that a red flag or, or do, you, do you think that matters? It honestly can be because I've gotten a request like that and I asked my friend, who, like, where do you know this person from? Okay. And they said, I have no idea. I just accept it. Okay. So you can't, really, you can't really know by that. But if it is somebody that you suspect that you know, kind of, you know, do some research, like ask a friend that is a mutual friend, you know, who is this? Because I don't see a picture or right. something of that nature. So right. that's a good way to check up on the safety. Okay. I've also noticed that I get a lot of strange messages from, it sounds like someone who obviously English is not their first language. And they'll say, hi, I came across your profile. I want get to know you and that's how it sounds I mean it just sounds like broken English or and it's just really strange and I ignore it and then I'll go back to look in my mail and it says removed because it was spam so how are these people even able to get out there and do that I mean where are they coming from do you know like getting your contact information yeah how do they even find out who you are to send you a message like that it's not a friend request it's a message in um. your inbox you, you mean like Facebook and yeah, like Facebook. social media? Facebook. Well, that sometimes people are actually trying to sell you something. And that's, I've, I've found that like re recently since I've had Facebook, I've had it for like a couple of years now, but I've realized that sometimes people even try to like, you know, you know how they would call before to advertise something. Sometimes they, you know, become your friend through Facebook and they try to sell you something. Okay. So that's another reason why people do that. Or they may be a predator trying to Right. get to know you a little better. Exactly, and that predator thing is very, very important because it can really turn dangerous and you don't wanna be a victim of, of not just internet harassment, but physical harm. So let's talk a little bit about bullying, cyber bullying. What, how does that start? Let, let's say that you're on Facebook because it is the most popular social media site. How does the cyber bullying situation begin? What, how does it start so that 
if it is already happening, I want the viewers out there to, to, to know, hey, I'm in a cyberbullying situation. Well, a lot of times bullying happens online because people feel that since it's online, it's not really me. Mm -hmm. So they tend to like say things that they wouldn't normally say in person. And that's how the bullying can Can you can give us start. an example or, I mean, you don't have to use any bad language. But. Well, that's, that's normally where it starts. Kind of really? like, kind of okay. like um, you know, like if you post a picture, they'll, you know, kind of say something mean about it okay. or something of that nature. And like, it's something that they wouldn't say in person. Just mm -hmm. something out of character. If you know, if you do know the people outside of mm -hmm. like the actual, the website, then mm -hmm. you can, you will know that this isn't, they wouldn't say this to me, mm -hmm. to be honest, because I know this person and this, like, this shouldn't happen. So the way you would address that would be to, you know, co converse with that person specifically first, okay, okay. if you do know them. So cyberbullying typically happens with friends you know, or well, not necessarily a friend, but someone you know from your high school. Or, oh, wow, okay. No, no, normally the people that are like furthest from your close circle of friends right. would be the ones like, you, you know, you accept it because, you know, I know this person, yeah. so I'll accept their friend They're request. But at the same time, if you don't converse with them like physically in person, then there's sometimes really not a reason for you to accept that. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just to kind of like keep up your image, yes. you probably shouldn't yes. because that's how that stuff starts. Okay, that's excellent. So you shouldn't address the cyberbullying yourself. You should tell a trusted parent. Is, was that, would that be your recommendation? Um, if, it, if it does get like in, more intense, okay. if it is that person that you don't really know and okay. it's getting very intense, then that's when you should definitely say something to address okay. it at all. Well, you know what? This discussion is getting very intense mm -hmm. and we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna be right back because we really need to make sure that we get everything you guys need to stay safe. Coming up on Everybody Knows. So Tammy, I hear we're both longtime customers of Household Furniture. Yes, I come in here every week. I like the quality of the furniture, and I also like that they allow me to make monthly payments that fits into my budget. Every week? Every week. At Household Furniture, get comfort, quality, and style at monthly payments you can afford with layaway, discounts for cash, and our in-store financing. Don't make the rental mistake. Come on to Household Furniture. I'm Kayla, a senior and a net literacy volunteer. Are you applying for jobs and not getting interviews? 69% of employers have rejected a candidate because of what they found out about them on social networking sites like Facebook. Inappropriate photos or comments about drugs and drinking, even when made in jest, can result in your application being eliminated from consideration. Finding a job is tough enough. Don't give employers a good reason not to hire you. For more information, visit us at safeconnects.org. Welcome back to Living by Design. We're having so much fun with this discussion. And now I'm here with Antonio and Mattia. And actually during the break, Antonio, you mentioned that your mom was a reporter for the Associated Press. Yes, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. She was a very, she's also like a very big influence on, on my life and kind of why I went into net literacy. And, her, and she's from, um, Central America. She's from Panama, and uh, in their culture, they're very more family-based, and um, it's more. She got me to like, trust my parents a little bit more, so that's a little bit why. Wow, I love that. That's very important because trust is critical, especially with the topics that we're going over today and the internet safety and these types of things. We've got to be very trusting of not just our parents but other role models in our lives, adults, and people that we trust. So. Awesome, that's great. Now, Mattia and Antonio both, before the break, we was talking, really going into the deep intensity about internet safety and some of the red flags. And so for either one of you guys, the cyberbullying situation. So you know someone at school and they just continue to cyberbully, cyberbully, they just won't leave you alone. How much do you take before you actually go to someone and say, hey, I need some help with this? Well, if it's um, a close friend that may or may not know what they're really doing, then personally, I would, I would speak to that person myself as their friend before I call an adult into play. And, you know, it gets, it gets to be like you're kind of enemies. So you don't want that to happen if it's your friend. So... First, if it's not like, you know, just directly blasting you and all that stuff, then you should 
go to them about it and then go to your parents if it continues and gets worse. Okay. So that's when you should go to your parents about it. And, and that's also after you've blocked them, after mm. you've deleted posts and all that. So if, if those steps don't do anything and somehow they get around them and they're really trying to hurt you, then that's when your parents should be notified. <laughs> okay. Now no you, matter what. Now, you said something that kind of piqued my attention. You block them? Yes. If you block someone, how are they going to um, keep bothering you? Well, uh, since I was like a youngin, I kind of... Um, I used to think that everybody was my friend and stuff like that. I was nice to everybody and stuff. And yeah. even today, I have a I have a couple of friends that um, you have to at first if they're like she said, um, if they're your friend, you should talk to them about the problem, let them know because sometimes some people don't know that certain people do not know that they're actually hurting your feelings. Mm, and um, good point. Uh, it's easy as blocking them, even on uh, the new software for the iPhone. There's a there's a thing that you you can temporarily like block the number so you don't get any of their messages and eventually it's that's just to you know get it over with and if it's to the point where they're taking multiple different routes to insult you or they're going out of their way to you know make your day worse that's when you should go to a parent or a trusted adult. Okay, now um, you 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 said something that. I'm really, really curious about now. Or maybe you said it, Mati. I don't remember. One of you said something about they may not know that they're hurting your feelings. And that is, that's very likely because sometimes people have weird senses of humor. I mean, yes. they may have a sense <laughs> yeah. of, I, mean, I, I know some adults who are like that, so I know there are tons of people like that. So they may just think that, oh, this is fun, and my way of having fun is at someone else's expense by making you feel bad. So I'm just having fun. So, you know, if, if you know that the person has that type of personality, should you, and this is for the viewers, should they just leave it alone for a while and see how long it goes, or should they address it immediately and say, well, I know you have that type of personality, but I don't think it's funny. Yeah, um, I feel like there's obviously people out there that are like that, you know, they kind of are a little bit on the mean side, but if they're your friends, you should um, talk to them about it, obviously, like sit down, have a serious conversation, conversation, let them know that you're serious, because sometimes some people might think that you're not being serious about how it bothers you, and if it gets to the point where they don't stop and it continues after you've told them multiple times to stop, I feel like that's when you should really um, either <laughs> find new friends or kind of, you know, get farther away from them and let yes. them know that it's actually affecting you. And also, and when he said that you should have a sit-down conversation, sometimes that's important too because if you know this person like outside of this social media, if you say to them on the social media that this is wrong, they might not get it because they're not seeing you as a person. They're seeing you as just letters on the on the True. screen. Like, so if you actually speak to that person, it might have a bigger impact than you just messaging them. That's like, you know, that kind of hurt my feelings. Don't do it. And then they post something else because right. they think it's funny now. Or go to another social media site. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, are you guys familiar with the anti-bullying laws? Because aren't there laws in the state of Indiana that, that say you're not supposed to do that? And that's where like reporting comes in, but that's for like extreme, like, the, okay. to, like, the, like as a general unspoken rule, that's like if someone is harassing you, like okay. just, that's when you go to like report it because Facebook has ways for you to report if someone is a, being abusive to you on their website. Right. Now, I feel like today um, some people don't really take those laws like seriously. Like mm -hmm. some people are like, well, you know, maybe he's just messing around and stuff like that, and they really don't think that there's a law out there protecting someone from cyberbullying, even because si bullying today is considered, or back then was considered just something that you live through. But I, I feel like people today should pay attention more to the law and know that there's actually laws out there protecting your child against these cyberbullies and can actually get, you know, help and stuff. Um, for your child, and I feel like that's not widely known. That's good. That's good. That's very good. Now, let's just kind of talk a little bit about bullying, period. 
not even the cyber aspect of it, but bullying is a big, 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 big deal. Now, I know you both have heard all the news stories about these kids coming to school with guns and, and killing other folks. What are your thoughts about that? What, what do you think is going on in the minds of those, those I, I say poor people, because obviously there are some emotional, mental things. What do you guys think about that? Well, to be honest, um, because I've, I've been through a couple of situations with the guns at school. Mm. And normally it's not because, it's not so much because the kid is, is being bullied, but it's because the kid is bullying him, like other people himself or herself. Mm, really? And Interesting. And it's kind of like through the insecurities that they have because they're a bully. They're trying to put people down to make themselves feel better. That's where they get the whole, I need something else to make me stronger. Wow. And they bring the gun or they, you know, do something to hurt other people kind of. In that sense, so not all the time are they the person being bullied, but they're actually the bully with the insecurities. Did not know that. And um, I also feel that a bully, and you've always heard the saying, "Sticks and stones may break my bones, right. but words won't hurt me." Right. And I feel like if you're the you yourself, if you're you're letting someone's words, and I know it's very hard because different people work different ways, yes. but you should think to yourself every single day that um, letting them affect your emotions and stuff is letting them bully you and uh, like I feel like um, emotionally you should take it to your part to you know like know that you're better than than what they're trying to tell you you are. Absolutely yes because there are bullying situations where not just in school or in the community but a lot of kids are getting bullied at home you know, and that's why I'm so happy that you both have great foundations and you have support parents and great role models who can help you through that process because I wasn't so fortunate. I, I had situations growing up where I came from a, from a very dysfunctional family. I got bullied at home. So, so I, I just want to say thank you so much, guys. This has been such a great interview, so much good information. You all are amazingly wonderful young people. And I just want to say continue doing the great work that you do, you're doing. And thank you for talking to our viewers today. Thank you. I'm Kathy Holloway Hill, and I want you to make sure that if you have to go back and watch this interview over again, please do that. Go to our Facebook page because we're always posting lots of information out there for your knowledge so that you can be aware of everything that you need to know to stay safe, keep your children safe, and keep our community safe. Because after all, we want to make sure that you live by design. Thanks for joining us. Living by Design is sponsored in part by Household Furniture. Don't make the rental mistake. Come on to Household Furniture. I'm Antonio Baltzell and I'm a sophomore at Fishers High School. 95% of what you do is mental. If you're mentally strong, you also be successful in life. And I live by design. My name is Matia Johnson. I'm a senior at Northwest Community High School, and I believe that parents should step up their game because your children are an image of yourself that is portrayed through society. And I am living by design.